The UAE is calling for the release of the ship Rawabi and its crew, which were hijacked by the Iran-backed Houthi militia on January 3rd. Our guest is Ambassador Gerald Feierstein, former ambassador to uh, Yemen, a U.S. ambassador, obviously, uh, who is uh, in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Well, it's a ship from Yemen bound for Saudi Arabia with Saudi equipment. Why is the UAE side suddenly so concerned? Well, it was a ship from the UAE and uh, on its way to, uh, to Saudi Arabia. Uh, carrying uh, equipment of uh, various uh, of various sorts, uh, what the Emirati said initially was that it was a uh, it was carrying humanitarian relief uh, items, uh, and so uh, and so this is a, an issue of not only of concern to the Emirates but really of concern to uh, anyone who relies on international shipping through the Red Sea. So just a general concern. Well, I think that there's a specific concern about this ship, but also a general concern about about freedom of navigation and uh, and anti-piracy. Now, th this happened on the anniversary of uh, Soleimani's assassination, so uh, we don't need a big guess who's behind it, right? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, this is an issue that has been of concern to the international community actually for some time. Uh, and that is that, uh, that the question of whether or not Iran uh, would see benefit, uh, would see some interest in positioning itself in a way that it could interfere with international shipping through the Bab al-Mandeb and into the Red Sea in the same way that it has the potential for interfering and in shipping through the Strait of Hormuz, uh, and that these are two critical choke points in the region uh, that have implications for global economy, global energy, uh, and therefore, uh, yes, uh, that uh, the question of whether or not Iran encouraged uh, this Houthi attack uh, or uh, directed it would be very much in people's minds. So uh, basically when the Emiratis are concerned about this ship, they don't see Yemenites, they see Iran, right? Uh, absolutely. The, the, the real question is, is not so much the Houthis uh, as it is whether Iran is behind all of this and whether this is advancing some kind of an Iranian uh, strategy. Right. Now, the Houthis had uh, previously targeted at least 13 commercial ships, according to the UN, with explosives and hijacked at least three. So this is going on for a while now. Who's controlling the Red Sea? Indeed, um, and there is, of course, an international coalition of which the United States is is a part, is a leader, in fact, uh, that has uh, taken on uh, responsibilities. Remember that that the initial threat to international shipping in that part of the world uh, was coming from Somalia, from pirates out of Somalia. Uh, now we see that uh, the the threat is coming from the other side of the Red Sea from uh, from the Yemen side. Uh, in the past, the United States has responded uh, not only uh, through uh, diplomatic and, and, uh, and sanctions, uh, but also has responded militarily uh, to instances where uh, threats to international shipping were coming from uh, Yemen. Uh, and that is certainly always an option uh, to uh, to revisit that if, in fact, these kinds of activities continue. Right. So we, uh, you know, we used to see the United States as the um, sailing cup around these waters, and not not so much lately. This is part of the uh, shift in Washington. Well, the United States uh, continues to operate uh, out of the uh, port of Djibouti. Uh, this is uh, within the area of responsibility of the Fifth Fleet, which is based in Manama. Uh, the United States continues to be uh, active in terms of these anti-piracy, anti-hijacking initiatives. Uh, we patrol uh, aggressively, extensively uh, in the region, and I think that we'll continue to do that.